I feel like I came into university with a lot of insecurities. Um, to this day, I hold myself to a very high standard, which can be good. But what those my friends have been really good at is just reassuring me that, you know what, you are doing enough. You are making a difference in the few things that you're doing. And that, you know, for me, it's like whenever I have a space at, at, at the table, I just feel like I, I get massive imposter syndrome. You know, like luckily right now I don't have it. But whenever I'm in a meeting, whenever I get the opportunity to, 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 to speak on a platform, I'm like, I should not be doing this. I'm occupying a platform. So they've played a massive role in that. And, you know, I can I, I, I see them, you know, playing a role in the in the rest of my life. So, hey, man, how's your, did. <laughs> how's your week, man? My week was good, bro. Um, since we last sat down for a podcast episode, um, I've been fortunate enough to have gone through the process of um, kind of legitimizing mm -hmm. like a small community project that I've been working on with my team for the mm -hmm. last six months. So the project is called Team Upside and essentially we provide academic and career support to young people from disadvantaged, less privileged backgrounds. And I started off in the council estate where I'm from and then we recently had an AGM. So me and my team of five, uh, we went over to Ealing Council, we signed a couple of documents <laughs> and it was just like, it was a big, it was a big day for us. That's um, incredible. And yeah, I felt really proud just seeing an idea turn into something yeah. quite Allah significant. Allah yeah, 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 man. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very grateful, man. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was me. And that was the only that highlight of my week, to be fair. That's incredible. That's uh, a great highlight. That must have been, what was what was your team saying on, on that day? On how, the were day? They, how were they feeling? Because I know they all took part and they all been part of what's been a very grassroots campaign. Yeah. Like, so I claim for, uh, if, I don't know how much you know about mm. it, but like with Suleiman's project team upside, it started with the plaque. You know when people say on the ground? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very on the ground. So people from the estate would hear about it through word of mouth and things like that. And they'll just come right. and then it's really inspiring to see how you can get people motivated without, you don't need resources or mm. anything like that. You just need to be from that, like if you're, especially from when you're from that community and people see you in the area and they see what you're doing and they just immediately gravitate towards it and like, okay, what's mm. this going on in my estate? Let me check it out. So yeah, how are people feeling on that day? I think it was a it was a day to reflect on how far we had come. Um, it was a day to just increase morale. You know, what mm. I mean? when you have those types of days where you can kind of, you uh, like a, a landmark or um, a milestone has yeah. uh, has definitely been achieved. Yeah. Mm. It just the whole team spirit is elevated. Oh, how yeah. was your week, bro? I helped host um, an event about nutrition and and health and like healthy eating. Um, and so for me, it was really interesting getting getting to hear from professionals in their field about nutrition and things like that and reflecting on how I uh, how I eat and my diet and things like that. One, one key fact I took away from it is that kiwi ha has more vitamin D than an orange. No way. So, yeah. No can way. I, wait, can I, can I ask you something, right? How did you how do you end up just hosting? Exactly. You know, you <laughs> someone, someone you, 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 you've jumped up. from theology to law to nutrition. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, so okay, so my good friends at EMY UK, okay, okay they um they they were hosting an event, um they they put together an event on on nutrition and fitness, um and I, I, they they were very kind enough to ask, are you are you available? Um, I have I was available, <laughs> <laughs> so um I took part and I was a very small part in what was a it was a much mm. wider. Um, body of work by all of the people on EMY UK. We have a very special guest in the building. Yes, man. Would you like to introduce yourself? You guys are too kind. Uh, yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sack Lane, and I've you know had the honour of being welcomed on onto the podcast, and very happy to be here. Sack Lane, how's your week? My week was interesting, um, and you know, whenever I do think about myself, and I do actually reflect on a Saturday when I can, um, you know, just before going to bed. And sometimes I struggle and I'm like, okay, what did I actually do? And I think it's about looking at, doesn't matter how big or how small. Um, but, you know, this week was a very interesting one. I was asked to host slash speak at an event. And the event was specifically about the Mughal Empire. Now, I'm not a, I'm not an academic. I'm not a research uh, student. I'm not someone who you'd think uh, is going to go up and speak about the Mughal Empire. But a friend asked me to do it. I went up um, and I had a really good time. Yeah. genuinely what yeah. was that what was it like tell us about so the, the, tell us give us a snippet and tell us how so i came in i spoke about you know where the empire came from the fact that they were turkic i spoke about the etymology of some of the what the, like the terminology that we use i.e mughal being um the cor a corruption of the persian word for mongol mm. because the mughal emperors they were of turkic slash mongol descent so mm. you know i really enjoyed it had some really positive feedback so i claim we like to start right okay. at the start so tell us some some early memories about yourself 
Early memories, well, I mean, grew up in the northwest of London, NW9 specifically. Grew up next to this little park. Now, what's quite interesting about my upbringing is my dad was actually born and raised in the same area. So, no same way. primary school, same secondary school. Very stark contrasts in sort of the lived experiences. Yeah, uh, we yeah. live in a different era, right? Yeah, exactly. And I remind myself of that every single day. Mm. How was primary school and, and, and sort of your early years? You know, I think there's a very major event which I definitely have to mention in my... I'm, I'm very comfortable mentioning it now. Um, you know, it happened in 99... Um, and it's something which my family has come to accept. It's something I've accepted a long time ago as well. Um, and that was, you know, the way that my grandfather passed away. Um, and unfortunately, uh, you know, may Allah grant them Jannah, he was murdered, unfortunately. Um, and this was definitely a turning point. You know, for my own family, it was a very relaxed, we had a very relaxed attitude to life. It was, you know, this food on the table and the rest is just like, there's no issues here. Very apolitical you know, involved in the community, but, you know, it would just get on each day by day. Now, that was a massive factor in tearing in tearing that up, essentially. And for me, I must have been about two years old. And if anyone knows my, my granddad, they know that he was very fond of me. I was, you know, my dad's first son. I had two older sisters. Um, you know, he used to walk me up to this, uh, you, you must know what Londis is, the corner shop. Yeah. Yeah. So he used to walk up me up. There was a massive hill from, from, my, from my road. He'd walk me up there, right, when I was little, very young. He take me to the corner shop and he used to give me strict instructions. Do not take any sweets from the shop. You know, you know the guy, the uncle behind the shop yeah. used to try to give me sweets. <laughs> so he used to say to me, don't take sweets. And, uh, you know, I still see that uncle to this day. Uh, whenever I see him, he's always singing praises about my granddad. And he says, you know what, son, whenever you'd come to the shop, you'd never take the sweet. And he goes, that's when I knew when you grow up, you're going to be a good man. I was like, well, I don't know. Wow. I don't know what kind of uh, yardstick you're using here. But hey, wow. um, so my grandfather is, you know, I didn't have... A lot of engagement with him in that sense but he's somebody i think about you know probably every single day massive source of inspiration for me so my family were involved in actually bringing uh the pakistani community over here uh, my great granddad and my granddad um you know legally obviously i'm not talking about putting you on a, on a on a ship or anything like that in that sense but you know they, he'd bring them over and he was a, he was a community oriented man so he'd literally bring people into the house if anyone landed over here right and you know They'd, they'd, they'd get this like number and it would say, when you get to the country, call this man. Nice. And these people were not related to my granddad at all, bro. Like he wouldn't know who they were for the most part. They could be anyone, but they'd call that number. They'd somehow get to Collendale, NW9, Northwest London. Uh, and my granddad would give them the box room and that box room they could stay in. And what he would do is my grandma still tells me he'd get them a towel, a toothbrush. Food was provided every single day at the table with the rest of the family and he'd find them a job. So until they got on their feet, my grandfather would give them that unconditional support. Uh, and, you know, even now in the community, if I go to Luton, if I go to Birmingham, I can go up to Glasgow. There are people who my granddad helped essentially set up in this country. So, you know, a very pivotal uh, uh, figure for me, wow, someone man. I still look up to. And I do feel like I have a massive uh, legacy to fulfill in that sense. I can just imagine this being a Hollywood film, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that, honestly, that's, honestly, that's amazing, man. Yeah, he's honestly. a very good man how much do you know about the murder but you know unfortunately it was the case that you know threats were made on his life um and he went back to pakistan and he was actually meant to go and report it to the police um to register it and say xyz because he knew who made the threats and he had the evidence my grandma got ill so my grandma got ill and the, uh, you know he took her to the hospital didn't go to the police station uh, and unfortunately i believe it was the next day outside my great grandfather's home uh, in my village, by the way, so my dad's village is in Jhelum. Uh, so that's on the, the banks of the river Jhelum, right next to Azad Kashmir. Um, it's in the Punjab. And the next day, essentially, he's sitting and there's this culture back home of, you know, the guest comes. You, the first thing you do is you give them your salam and then you bring them some refreshments. And then you find out why they're here. You don't say, what do you want? You know, you bring him in. So, you know, my granddad brought him in. My granddad's friend went to get some refreshments, went to get some water and some tea maybe. Um, and then, you know, the two men that entered the room, they got up and they said, you know, we're just going to go and use the restroom. It was very weird. Um, and then they got out and, you know, from, from the window behind, they, they shot my grandfather. Um, and that was it, you know, and it was it was something that was very difficult for my family, for the village, um, for the police even. And that's that, that for me, I've sort of made my peace with it, if that makes sense. But going back to like role model. Someone I look to uh, look up to every single day, man. Genuinely. Incredible. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, bro. Yeah, you. oh, you're welcome, man. Secondary school? Secondary school, interesting. So I mentioned how my dad 
I went to the same secondary school as him as well, actually. So, Hendon School, it's in just near Golders Green. Very interesting school. When I went in, had a tough time because, bro, like two weeks in, people have made friends, believe it or not, in year seven. Yeah. Those are like, <laughs> bro, it's like it's like university. Yeah, even yeah. Those first few <laughs> weeks are like hit, like make or break. So I went in, I knew a few, I knew a few of the Somali brothers from mosque. You know, there were one or two people from primary school. Um, but apart from that, I had to find my way. And you know, the issue is in secondary schools, man, you lot must be able to relate to this, yeah? There's always those annoying little kids, yeah, that have older brothers in the years ah, above, yeah? If, if you're not one of them, yeah, nah, it's trouble. You. That's a, that's a fast track. <laughs> <laughs> fast track to popularity, fast track to friends. Bro, that, that was like a, that yeah. was like a, what's the, it's like a, it, it's a pass to Trust do anything yeah. you want. Gold so yeah. that's it. You know, I I, I wasn't slotted into that. I wouldn't do that if I was you. You know that's my man's brother. <laughs> that's my man's bro. Do you, know, do you know the worst thing is? Yeah, you're locked into that toxic environment for five years. Yeah, you have to accept that hierarchy, whether you like yeah. it or not. You can't campaign or do occupations <laughs> against that, bro. Nah, nah, do you know, nah, there's nah, no nah. grassroots movements <laughs> against that, man. You have to accept it. So, uh, I've got I've got a question for both of you. So. Have you retained any of these characteristics like now? Mm. Like, is there, are there any of those characteristics that you've purposefully tried to retain? Uh, <laughs> or is it full scale transformation? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I think there is underlying. Do you know what's interesting? I think underlying, yeah, I'm still the exact same person I was. I'd agree with that. But so. there's obviously you learn in that, but I don't know how much like the fundamentals. I remember someone saying to me after the age of 12, you stay throwing a ball how you throw a ball. Like, you can't change it. Do you know what? I completely agree with that as well. Fundamentally, you know, I mean, I still meet people, right? And in terms of the stuff I'm involved in and et cetera, et cetera, is like completely different, right? Let's be honest. But fundamentally, who I am, you know, I'm the same person, they say, because even if I used to be, and I was internal extrusion a lot, by the way, I, w- I was always being put away for dumb things, bro, like smiling during the fire drill. Like, you will not believe it, man. <laughs> I'm I telling you, bro. Like, as in what? <laughs> oh, do you know what I mean? Days. I think they just need an excuse. I think they just had a quota. Like, That's we need it. to get. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> What's he doing? What's that clean doing? That's like, bro, it, bro. I'm, I'm thinking, like, they had some agenda here, yeah, but, yeah, you know. Fully, man, fully. Um, fundamentally, I would still like to think, and I still get that feedback of, of old friends that I bump into. I'm the same sack claim that they knew. Yeah. Um, Question for you. Go on. Based off that topic. Go on. Let's do it. Is there a friend at university that you made that has changed your life the most? <laughs> well, do you know what? <sighs> <clears throat> there is. And, you know, there, there, there are different groups and different friends that have done so much for me. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking specifically about, you know. So, for example, my friend Abdurrahman Tamimi, right? Um... Or even, you know, what a close friend of mine, Hamza, um, from City. A funny thing about Hamza, yeah, our granddads came to this country together. Our rock up, <laughs> no. yeah, and our dads were friends. Like, my, his dad was dancing at my dad's wedding, yeah. <laughs> old, old school, you yeah. just saw some old school footage. <laughs> o- obviously, now they're like in the masjid and stuff, yeah, but they were breaking it down. And then, bro, I get to the first day of uni, induction, and I see this guy. In my head, I'm like, this brother, like, what? where have I come, man? Because you only come uni, you want to meet new people, yeah. I'm like, I don't want to see you, but alhamdulillah, man, best experience. And, you know, and even people like, for example, Rahma and Asif and the people I've met at KCO, for example, yeah massively pivotal man i feel like i came into university with a lot of insecurities um to this day i hold myself to a very high standard which can be good but what those my friends have been really good at is just reassuring me that you know what you are doing enough you are making a difference in the few things that you're doing and that you know for me it's like whenever i have a space at 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 the table i just feel like I, i get massive imposter syndrome you know like luckily right now i don't have it but whenever I'm in a meeting, whenever I get the opportunity to, 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 to speak on a platform, I'm like, I should not be doing this. I'm occupying a platform. So they've played a massive role in that. And, you know, I, cont- I, I, I see them, you know, playing a role in the, in the rest of my life. Sakhalin, you've mentioned quite a few times now that you're, the, you're a yes man or you're the type oh, of person bro, yeah. that takes opportunities oh, when they see it. Yeah. One of the massive opportunities <laughs> that you've been <laughs> offered or you've been, you know what I mean, you've been yeah. given in recent times is yeah. the opportunity to go on Good Morning Britain. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk a bit about that experience, what you took away from that experience? Yeah. See, I told one person, uh, I've told my friend uh, Tamimi, right, he's got a bit of a big mouth, but I think for the time being, he was all right. And I told my parents, I was like, look, I'm going on this on this show. Like, what do you think? Because obviously you want their blessings before you do these things and... I think I still was in that sleepwalk mode and I kind of knew what I wanted to talk about, but I wasn't ready 
for the realities of it. And what I, you know, and, and I mentioned to you guys before this started about hindsight. And I think hindsight is such a powerful tool in that it can be very productive, but very destructive as well. It can be productive in the sense where in hindsight, you're like, oh, I should have done this and I should have done that. And you're not when you're in the shower and you think about who you should have beaten up and how you would have done it. Yeah? <laughs> like it can be positive in that sense. But if it starts to drag you down and you're like, oh, I'm such a bad person. This was terrible. Then it can be negative. But, you know, in hindsight, I shouldn't have gone on there. And previously when they'd contacted me, I've re- I'd reached out to, to, to friends that are involved in things like FOSIS or the NUS or they just have had media training at some point. And they were like to me, look, if you do decide to ever go on or if you're ever approached, let me know because we can get you media training. We can get someone to help brief you up. But, bro, you know what? You know, in economics, they look at every person as if they were making rational decisions. The reality is, bro, like we're not rational beings, man. You yeah, know this, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I made that decision. Come on. So, you know, I, I decided to go on, bruv, 6 a.m. So surreal. Addison Lee pulls up outside my house, yeah? Lee, I jump yeah. in, they drive me to the ITV studios in White City. I still haven't told a soul. I don't know. I think I'm Superman out here or Batman, right? I've told no one. You drink some coffee, yeah? Not even coffee, bro. I just took water. Mad. You know them ones, innit? And then I was tired and I was like, what am I? T-? It was very surreal, by the way. I couldn't, it was not registering in my head that I'm on my way to a TV channel where I'll now be on live TV. So anyway, they fired some questions at me. I kind of answered, like, to be honest, yeah, if, if you're an expert in, in the field of that debate, I, I'm a waffler. Like, I made no sense, right? Um, if you look at it from the perspective of I've had no media training and first time going on TV, I did okay. Like I didn't let them speak over me. I held my own. Didn't say anything stupid, which apparently is a very like difficult thing to do from what I've been told, right? But yeah, I came off it and I'll be honest with you guys. Yeah, the regret was real. I was like, what have I done? Um, and I hadn't told anyone. And then obviously, apparently some people do watch this stuff. <laughs> so my face started popping up on Instagram, on Twitter. You know they, you know what they did on Twitter, right, for the GMTV, Good Morning Britain um, Twitter page. They took a snippet where it came across like I was shouting over the, the doctor, the academic, who's obviously a woman. And they tried to paint this narrative as the loud, angry, brown Muslim man with a beard. And I was literally called beard in the comments, by the way. It's bare jokes. Like, they were like, beard shouts over woman. <laughs> um, and that's how they paint it. Like, one of my colleagues at work, says, when he sees me, he just goes, beard. <laughs> and it cracks me up. But, you know. And I still get Facebook messages hating on me and stuff. And hindsight is a powerful tool. And a few of my, you know, people did reach out to me. Some people who I respect a lot. And I did feel like I disappointed them. And I felt like I disappointed the community. Because the reality is, once again, I represented all Muslims when I went on that show. I represented all Muslim students, union officers and young activists and young people and snowflakes everywhere. Do you know what I mean? We shouldn't have to and we don't need to subscribe to this dichotomy of being, you know, either British or or Pakistani or Sudanese in that sense. I think for me and for all of us, I hope I can speak for, there are things about me which are inherently like innately British and then there are also parts of me which are like, Pakistani and parts of me values etc etc which come from my religion and you know I think that balance doesn't have to be compromised and you know I don't know if you watched Riz Ahmed's interview on one of these American talk shows once but he was like this is what being British looks like Mm. in its current moving forward and looking forward what kind of person do you want to become in all honesty I'm not and this is something I have to constantly remind myself of I don't I don't see myself being someone that is put on a massive platform and is being the visible leader of any type of movement or anything like that. What I see myself as is someone who is consistent in contributing to whatever causes I'm involved with. Like, I'm happy to be the grey man. um, And I think if I keep my intentions in check and I don't let things get to my head because the reality is, guys, come on, like things get to your head when you're doing things right. I just want to be someone who is having an impact. And I hope that I don't become institutionalized. I don't start to focus on the wrong things. And most important of all, and it's something I stress and talk about like on a weekly, if not daily basis, I really want this to have an intergenerational effect. I want, inshallah, if I'm blessed with kids and a family in the future, for me, my biggest thing is like, forget everything else I've done. I want if I have four kids, I want four of me in that sense, four people who share in that passion and can drive that change for generations to come. Because if that doesn't happen, it all would have gone to waste. You know, what about you guys? 
Do you still want to be here listen, in, in 30 years uh, listen, on the podcast? I know for myself, I'm not <laughs> topping that answer. So <laughs> no, I'm no, just no. going to call you the great man with the great, with the great jumper. I'm the great, great man, man with the great, great jumper. jumper. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> nah, but honestly, I've taken a lot away from this conversation. So I claim that. Thank you for coming. Likewise. No, um, you're welcome. No, nah, honestly, you, got, you, got, you guys are too kind. And that's why, you know, when I got the message, I was like, you know what? I'm going to come up to Cambridge as soon as I can. And yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you so much, much, man. I really appreciate it, genuinely. Nah, nah, great conversation. Thank you. That was, I enjoyed that, boys. That was very good.